In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve quadratics by uh, two processes. One is called completing the square, and the other one is solving with what is called the square root method. And when we're going to use the square root method, I want you to fill this out at the top of your sheet, is when you have an x squared set equal to a number, um, or if you have a quadratic and you're missing the linear, it's called the BX middle term. And so what you're going to see is an AX squared and um, a C term, but your middle linear term is not going to be in the problem. And so we're going to be using the square root method for both of those. Um, now, steps to solve would be, number one, to isolate your X squared or you might see a uh, parentheses, so a parentheses of x and a number in a, in a parentheses set squared. So what you want to do is isolate your square part of your function on one side of the equal sign. And then number two, you're going to take the square root of each side. And then number three, solve your two equations. Now, there are going to be two, and this is why. If you apply a square root sign, you must also apply a plus and minus to that square root sign. So if you're taking the square root, you have to know that your answer could be a positive or a negative. And I'm going to show you why here on the very first example. So if I have my x squared isolated set equal to a number, and I apply this symbol, the square root symbol, the square root undoes a square, um, I need you to know that you actually could get a positive or a negative. And I'm going to show you why. A 4 times a 4 will get you 16, but so will negative 4 times negative 4. That will also get you positive 16, and this is why. You need the plus and minus sign. Okay, so it's super important if you apply that square root symbol, you have to also apply to your answer positive and negative. And so for my answer here, I have two numbers that could be squared that multiply to make 16. It could be positive 4 or negative 4. All right, now in my next example, what I need to do is isolate my square term. And so I want to get this term all alone. And how I'm going to do that is by adding 22 to the other side. And now what I'm going to do is isolate the x squared part of it by dividing by 2. And I'll have x squared equal to 11. Now what I'm going to do is apply that square root symbol. The square root of a square is going to be just x. And I'm going to apply that plus and minus here. Now, I'm not sure what your teacher is going to want from you exactly. But I'm going uh, to accept either the radical or the decimals. And so I want to show you that the square root of 11 has a decimal. And I think I get that. Where is my conversion? Here. My button is S to D, meaning like standard to decimal form. And so on my calculator, that's how I'll get that. So I would also accept as an answer positive and negative 3.3. 3, 2. I'll give just a couple, couple decimal places. So square root or decimal is okay for me. Actually, I'd probably defer, prefer the decimals, to be totally honest, because if I were to say graph those two numbers, square root of 11, you'd probably be like, what? I don't know how to do that. But you could know how to graph a 3.3, .3, so kind of in between a 3 and a 4. Okay, now in my next example here, my x squared is isolated, and so I'm going to apply that square root symbol. And so my x will be positive and negative square root of negative 4. And I hope you remember our chapter 1, but when you take the square root of a negative number, this is impossible. Because there is no number times itself that will get you a negative answer. It's impossible. And so the square root of a negative number is going to give us no 
real solution. In your next Algebra 2 class, what you'll do is take that square root, and what you'll do in the future is call it um, 2i. But I don't want you to worry about that now. I just want you to know that if we're going to take a square root of a negative number, we are going to call it in my Algebra 1 class um, no real solution because, like I said, 2 times 2 does not equal negative 4. And remember, we said those numbers have to be the same. x times x, they have to be the same number. And negative 2 times negative 2 does not equal negative 4. And so that's why I'm not going to have x times x, a number times itself, make negative 4. It's impossible. All right, here's some more examples here. And um, what I'm going to do is isolate my square term. So I'm going to subtract the 120 to isolate the square part. So I have negative 6x squared is equal to negative 150. And now to get my x squared part isolated, um, oops, not 60, just 6. I'm going to divide by 6. OK, negative 150 divided by negative 6 is going to get me 25. Positive 25, because the negative divided by negative is positive. And now I'm going to apply that square root symbol. So I'm going to apply the plus and minus. And the square root of 25 is 5. All right, we've got a couple more here on this page. And then we have three more examples on the next page as well before we go on to the next topic. To isolate my x squared term, I'm going to add 12 to the other side. And I'll have 15x squared is equal to 120. 12 plus 8 is going to get me 20, so 120. Divide by 15. OK, 120 divided by 15 is 8. So now what I'm going to do is apply that square root sign. Oops. So my x is going to be equal to a positive and negative square root of 8. Now, I don't know if you've been taught how to simplify square roots yet, so I'll kind of do a small introduction here. What you want to look for is perfect squares that go into your number. And a perfect square that goes into 8 is the number 4. 4 is a perfect square. And so what you can do is split these up as the square root of 4 and the square root of 2. And the square root of 4 is a 2. And then that square root of 2 that's not a perfect square stays. So this would be the simplification of uh, square root of 8. But if your teacher wants you to write a decimal, I'm going to erase that just so that it's not getting in the way of my answer here. Um, square root of 8 you could do if you just are allowed to put the decimal down. And again, 2 squared of 2. Notice how my calculator actually simplifies that for me. I love this calculator. Um, but if I hit the uh, standard form to decimal button right up above my delete key, the decimal for that would be 2.83, roughly. So positive and negative 2.83. So depending on what your teacher wants, the simplified radical or the decimal here, you have both. All right, so this problem here, like I said up above, you want to isolate your square part or perhaps a parenthesis. And so in this example, I'm going to isolate the parenthesis set. So I'm going to subtract 4 here. So I have x plus 3. This is the piece that is squared. And that will equal 16. So now to get my x alone, I have to square root at this point. So my x plus 3, the square undoes um, a, the square root. So the square root and the square cancel each other out. And now I'm left with a positive and negative square root of 16. And I know what the square root of 16 is. It's 4. So I have an x plus 3 that is equal to a positive 4. And I have an x plus 3 that is also equal to negative 4. And so I'm going to solve each of those separately because I am going to get two different answers here. And I'm going to subtract my 3 to solve 4x. Because I could have had positive 4, so notice how I had positive 4, or negative 4. 4 minus 3 is 1. And if I subtract 3 here, negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. And so those are my two solutions for a group squared. Okay, we have three more examples for this type of solving, and all of these are groups. So I'm going to show you a couple more in case you were confused on that last problem. 
what we want to do is isolate the group here. So here this we want to get alone for here this one and for here this one. We want that group isolated. So you got to get rid of a constant term first. So I'm going to tr subtract 4 here. And 40 minus 4 is 36. Now if I want the group alone, I need to divide by 3. 36 divided by 3 is 12. And now I can square root both sides. So my x plus 5 will equal positive and negative square root of 12. Now the square root of 12, we can break down into a 4 times a 3. And the square root of 4 and the square root of 3 can be separated as simplify. So this would be 2 square roots of 3 if you're supposed to leave it in a simplified radical form. So I have x plus 5 could equal positive or negative. So again, 4 times 3 made 12. The square root of 4 is a whole number. It's 2. And that 3 that wasn't a perfect square gets left behind. So 2 square root of 3. And now what I'm going to do is solve each separately because i got to subtract 5. And so what I'm going to do is set two equations up, 2 square root of 3. Um, oops, I'm kind of running out of room here. That's okay. I'm going to write really small, negative 2 square root of 3. And so subtract 5 on both sides. So here I'd have negative 5 and uh, the positive 2 squared of 3, subtract 5, and I'd have the 5 that I subtracted minus the 2 squared of 3. You might also see it like this. If you had subtracted 5 from here, and then plus and minus 2 squared of 3, a lot of teachers would accept that as an appropriate answer as well. But again, let's say that you were allowed to get the decimal answer. So I'm going to use kind of a post-it note since I'm running out of room at this point here. So if x plus 5 was equal to positive and negative square root of 12, if you're allowed to get the decimal, let's get that decimal here. So square root of 12, and I'm going to get my decimal. So positive and negative, I'm going to round this to 3.5. So now subtract 5. I subtracted 5, and we had the positive and negative 3.5. So now let's actually get our two answers. Negative 5 plus 3.5, and the negative 5 minus. So I'm going to do both of those, one with a plus and one with a minus. And let's get our two answers. Negative 5 plus 3.5. It's negative 1.5. And I'm going to go back here and change it to minus negative 8.5. So depending on how your teacher wants you to simplify, you could have these two answers. This is the decimal form of this answer. It just depends on what kind of your teacher wants from, for you to have. Okay, now in this example, I'm going to try to write smaller so that I don't run out of room like I did last time. I'm going to start with subtracting 5. And I'll have negative 3 and my group, that group is squared, equal to 15. And now what I'm going to do is divide by negative 3. And I get negative 5. Now when I apply the square root here, to my group, I'm going to be taking the square root of a negative number. And this is going to give me no real solution. Because we cannot take the square root of a negative. Nothing times itself will ever be negative. It'll either be positive or positive. Because a negative times a negative is still positive. And so this one, no real answer. All right, last one. Great job hanging in there. This video is getting a little long, and we are almost done. So if I subtract 7 here, 
I'm gonna get a number that's 14, and now I'm gonna divide both sides by two. So divide by two, divide by two, and I'll get seven. Now I'm going to apply that square root symbol. I actually wanna write that down. Apply square root, apply square root. So I actually don't need my parentheses anymore because my square and the square uh, root undo each other, and I will have plus and minus the square root of seven. And if I'm gonna add six to the other side, I will have six plus the square root of seven, and six, because I added it, minus the square root of seven. So let's get the decimal for that answer. So this would be an acceptable answer if you were told to leave your answer in square root, but let's get a decimal for that square root of seven. This would be 2.6 if I round. So six plus 2.6 and six minus 2.6, so let's get both of those. This is gonna be 8.6, and six minus 2.6 is gonna give me 3.4. So that would be the decimal answer to your square root answer, and those are the same numbers. So, you know, if your teacher were to say, graph those two roots, it's a little bit harder if you don't know what, you know, the decimals are, and so your function, your parabola, since this is a square, it would cross at a 3.4 and an 8.6, and that's roughly what your parabola would look like.